Welcome back. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the thermal stability of the nitrates. And this is very similar to the thermal stability of the carbonates that we saw in the last video. They follow the same pattern. In other words, that the thermal stability increases as you go down the group because the cations become less polarizing. It's slightly complicated by the fact that the nitrates can either partially decompose or totally decompose. So we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail. So we're on page 14 of your notes and we're looking at this decomposition of the nitrates. Now, as we said, there can be partial decomposition, which will take the nitrate 5 to the nitrate 3 iron and oxygen, or complete decomposition, which will take the nitrate to the oxide, oxygen and nitrogen dioxide. Now group 2 nitrates, because the group 2 cation is more polarizing, will all fully decompose. The group 1 nitrates will partially decompose with the exception of lithium. Lithium will totally decompose because lithium is the smallest of the group 1 cations and therefore the most polarizing. So the sodium, which is NaNO3, the uh, nitrate 5 iron, will decompose to make NaNO2 because it's changed to the nitrate 3 iron and will release some oxygen gas. Now, I can balance this by putting my half here or I could put a 2 here and a 2 here. It doesn't matter. And you've got solids, solids, and obviously this is a gas. Barium nitrate, on the other hand, is a group 2 nitrate and it will completely decompose. So I've got barium nitrate, got 2 there, and that's going to turn into the oxide and nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas. Again, to balance it, I'm going to get 2 there and a half there, or I could type but 2, 2, 4, and then one oxygen. Again, this is my solid, gives me solid barium oxide, gaseous nitrogen dioxide, and gaseous oxygen. So again, it's down to the polarizing ability of the cations. And group two have the most polarizing cations, therefore it is group one which form the more stable because they're less polarizing. As you go down the group, the stability will increase. And that doesn't matter if you're group one or group two, because as you go down the group, they become less, or the ions become less polarizing. Most group one nitrates only partially decompose. The exception to this is lithium, which totally decomposes. So I have lithium nitrates, which is totally decomposing to lithium oxide and nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. Again, it needs to be balanced up. So I'm going to put a two there, two and a half. Again, I could go through and times everything up if I wanted to. The reason lithium nitrate is different to the other group one nitrates is that lithium is the smallest cation. Therefore, it's the most polarizing of all the group one ions. So because it has this smallest ionic radius of any group one cation, it's therefore the most polarizing group one cation. And it's the only one that's able to distort the electron cloud around the nitrate sufficiently enough to, over, to undergo complete decomposition. So you're going to carry out this experiment in a class in a similar way to the one you did with the carbonates. There is, however, a new safety precaution, and it's related to this nitrogen dioxide gas. This nitrogen dioxide is a brown gas. Now, one thing you need to know about colored gases, all colored gases are poisonous. So nitrogen dioxide is a poisonous gas. So we don't really want it being released too much into the lab. So 
what you're going to do is you're going to heat your uh, nitrate if you see brown gas coming off you stop heating and you go and put it in the fume cupboard it's quite a dense gas so it will stay in your test tube but you don't need to continue to test for oxygen because the only way you can get the oxygen gas coming off is if you've got the nitrogen dioxide so as soon as you see brown fumes you stop heating and put it in a fume cupboard so the nitrogen dioxide because it's brown can be identified by its color oxygen on the other hand should be tested for by the fact that it can relight a glowing splint so if it relights or it glows more brightly that's a positive test so here are the results from this thermal decomposition experiment you should see that all the group two nitrates decompose to give off the brown gas of nitrogen dioxide and they all relight the spill giving uh, an indication that oxygen is also being given off it gets easier as you go up the group as the magnesium cation is more polarizing than the barium cation the group one nitrates follow a very similar pattern with the thermal stability increasing as you go down the group. So lithium nitrate is the only one which can decompose to form a brown gas and relight the spill, indicating oxygen is being given off. Sodium and potassium nitrate will only relight the spill. They will not show any brown gas being given off. So the group one metal which totally decomposes is lithium. The other group 1 metal nitrates only partially decompose, but the group 2 nitrates will completely decompose. So on page 16 of your notes, again, you've got two stu ex-students' answers there to the question why magnesium nitrate decomposes more readily than potassium nitrate. So there are four marks available. Go through those two answers and see what you would give them. Then have a go at writing out the perfect answer. So this top answer was a relatively good answer. It scored three out of the four marks available. It had a mark for giving the fact that magnesium ions have a higher charge and a smaller ionic radius. It got a mark for saying that the magnesium ions can distort the electron cloud more easily. They lost the last mark because they weren't specific about which bonds were being weakened, which bonds were being overcome. They talked about the bonds in magnesium nitrate, but they weren't clear if that was the bonds in the nitrate or the bonds between the magnesium and the nitrate. You need to be very careful of that last point. Looking at this second answer, it's very muddled. It's very confused and we're not really addressing the question. So this is an example where the students got themselves in a real muddle and didn't score any marks at all. So this was an old exam question, and this is the mark scheme for it. So notice where the marks are given. So you get one mark for saying that the magnesium ion is smaller than the potassium ion. I'd always include that comparison. It has a higher charge than potassium. That's your second mark. Therefore, it polarizes the nitrate ion more or distorts the electron cloud of the nitrate ion more. That's your third mark. It's generally speaking this fourth mark that students miss out. And that's what happened in the first answer. It weakens the NO bonds or it weakens the nitrate bonds more. You need to be specific about which bonds it is actually weakening. So that finishes this section of the notes looking at the thermal stability of carbonates and nitrates. Make sure you're able to explain how and why the thermal stability changes as you go down a group and across a period. And don't forget to mention which bonds are actually being weakened. In the next and the last video in this topic, we're going to be looking at flame tests. So until then, take care, stay safe. Bye bye.